Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Gaming to the Come video, we have a trio of news for you. The first of which is AMD's Ryzen chipset driver. There is a new one available, which improves performance on AMD's new processor. Then NVIDIA unleashing the GeForce GT 1030. Perhaps not quite what you're expecting, but still, it is going to be a pretty impressive performing card for the market segment it's targeting. We'll get into that in a moment. And finally, Intel launching a new Xenon series of processors up to 28 cores, 56 threads. Um, but I just want to get into a little bit of housekeeping before I start the news. This is for more regular viewers. It'll only take a moment. The most important thing is Amy is still in America. She is currently in Austin uh, visiting AMD and also MSI. So she will be back Saturday morning, I want to say. I think she's on like an 11 a.m. flight or something like that. So she'll be back Saturday. There are a couple of photos of what she's getting up to in the States on our Facebook page. So you can, by all means, check that out. I believe she's already shared them. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not to her personal one. I'm pretty sure it's to RGT. So feel free to check that out. as facebook.com slash redgamingtech. Or if you're feeling lazy, like I usually am, you can just check the link in the video description. Um... So that's one cool thing. Finally, the reviews are almost done. We've got the case review up, which is good, of the Aurora. And we have two other GPU reviews, which are almost finished. We have the 1050 tie as well as the 1060. Finished with benchmarks of the former. The latter, I need just a couple of 1440p ones before we send those back to the respective manufacturers. I'm hoping to get that done over the next day or two. Um... And probably the videos will be up end of the weekend. Okay, with all of the housekeeping over and done with, let's talk about the bits and bobs that have popped up in the news. The first of which is AMD and their new Ryzen chipset drivers. Now, they do boost performance, but essentially this is dependent on your power setting. So, in other words, if you've run Ryzen uh, in the past with a Windows 10 machine with the default balance power plan, essentially what you're getting is free performance. On the other hand, if you've been running with high performance power plan, which is, as some of you probably know, the optimum way I've been doing the Ryzen 7 benchmarks or just running Ryzen in the past, then now you're going to be able to enjoy free power efficiency thanks to the release of these drivers. The too long didn't read is that these drivers essentially let the processor itself, that is Ryzen, manage its own power states. Typically Windows does this for it. Um, basically Windows operates its own software layer which essentially handles power management of the Ryzen CPU. That's bad considering that AMD Sense MI is essentially clashing with it. And basically it means that the performance of the processor, if you're not running on the high performance power plan, up until now anyway, you're basically hindering the performance of your CPU. It's not really AMD's fault. It's not really, you know, Microsoft's fault, I guess. It's just how it is. And personally, I feel that they should have kind of cooked the drivers a little bit more, but it is what it is. You know, I think that, honestly, it's a free performance upgrade. It improves performance across the board. Even if you've got you know, your system running on a high power plan, you might as well just install these drivers because, you know, they're the latest. Anyway, I'm going to try and do some testing on them at some point or another in the next, you know, week or two if I get the chance. it will be kind of cool if I could. But either way, you know, that's good. Now, speaking of that's good, but not exactly going to set the world alight, that is NVIDIA's GeForce GT, not GTX, GT1030. So what is it? Well, it's basically another version of Pascal, of course. It is featuring the GP108 core with a total of 512 CUDA cores. But the impressive thing here isn't the number of CUDA cores or performance necessarily. It is just taking 30 watts of... Uh, sorry, it's just operating on 30 watts TDP. It's still on the same 14nm FinFET process. And it's essentially the equivalent of like the GT730 or GT930, but with Pascal. What does that mean in terms of raw performance? Well, I'm glad you ask. Honestly, it does of course depend upon the game, but early reports do say that it should be a roughly on par with a 750 tie. 
What does that mean? Well, it's not going to be, let's face it, for tearing through games at 1080p. It's just not going to do that. It's got 512 stream processors, 32 TMUs, that's texture mapping units, and 16 ROPs, as well as a 64-bit, I'm just going to refer, uh, repeat that one more time, 64-bit memory interface. And it looks like it has either 2 or 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Um, and that also is most likely 7 GBPS. So in theory, at max, you're looking at around 56 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, which is not exactly going to rip through uh, games, is it? But... This is more tackling the RX 550. So what you have here is basically a step up from most IGPs, integrated graphics cards that are, let's say, embedded in an Intel CPU. But it's also a step down from, let's say, a 1050 Ti or something along, along those lines, which is capable of playing most games at 1080p at pretty decent graphical quality. The primary purpose of this card is to tackle AMD's RX 550. So, essentially, it's NVIDIA trying to say, hey, we, we have something as well which can, you know, fight this off. Um, Videocards.com managed to snag a performance uh, grab from Ashes of the Singularity, and it's getting roughly what you'd expect, about 1,100 points on standard 1080p. Not exactly going to set the world alight, but roughly on par with what you'd expect with this level of card. Now we're going to be closing the video with the Xenon series of processors from Intel, which of course does stick well within the realms of enterprise and server solutions, but still it's quite interesting, at least in my opinion, to discuss. So currently the Intel launch caters only up to 28 cores and 56 threads, which is far from a paltry number, but isn't quite up to the 32 core, 64 thread number that we heard from an engineering sample last year, but still... So this is all based upon, excuse me, the Skylake Pearly platform. You might think to yourself, well, 28 cores and 56 threads is kind of bonkers, and you are definitely right, it is very impressive indeed, but what is even more impressive is the platform is actually scalable up to 8 sockets. You can do the math yourself, but even if you were to just fill 2 sockets with a 28 core, 56 thread processor, that's crazy numbers. But when you start going up to like 4, 6, or 8 processors, that's when the lunacy really starts to take a hold of you. So, the Skylake Purdy platform is quite different from previous ones. For example, you get the Intel Omni Architecture uh, integration, also known as Stormlake Generation 1. You have the ability to have 6 um, channels of DDR4 memory, uh, inclusion of the AVX512 instruction set, and, well, a lot of other bits and bobs, quite frankly, that just make this platform absolutely crazy, and a lot of folks will be drooling over it, especially compared to the Broadwell architecture that was previously, um, you know, Intel's top of the line. So, does all of this mean that you're going to be rushing out and seeing, like, you know, loads of uh, Broadwell processors suddenly in the bin and in your local tip? Probably not. But it is all-encompassing. It is very much Intel offering a processor, a Xenon processor, for pretty much everyone. I have to say, though, the naming conventions are somewhat interesting. So you have bronze, silver, gold, and finally, platinum. You have the platinum being the 8000 series. Gold will be the 6 and 5000 series. Uh, and then you have, finally, the... 4000 series for silver and bronze will be 3000 series and obviously those will differ from the number of cores, clock speed and so on and so on. The lower end processors will just have 10 cores which is admittedly absolutely paltry and pitiful when you think about it all the way up to 28 cores um, assuming once again that the 32 core model does not see the light of day. What does all of this mean for you as a gamer? Probably not that much to be honest. It is just quite interesting, and I do like to follow the high-end markets, the servers, the, you know, the AI, the deep learning, the, you know, all of that stuff, because it does eventually trickle down to gamers and does, of course, some of this technology, uh, even the actual platform itself, 
does often form the basis of what we can expect to see in the next generation of processors that we will be able to be using in our desktops. Anyway, uh, I didn't want to talk about the Xenon side of things too much because let's face it, it probably doesn't really pertain to the average uh, user, but still, it's quite interesting, at least in my opinion. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.